ABC, it's Greeno. Welcome to the weekend. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. Uh, my last video it was snowing, I was all excited. This video, it's snowing and I'm all excited. <laughs> I got a lot of people saying they hate the snow, leaving comments, that's cool. Uh, I love it, so happy as can be. Let's jump right into this. Got a couple things. I was out Christmas shopping yesterday, hit, a, hit one shop and found a couple things. You know, after we got done Christmas shopping, so, uh, and one thing in the mail. Uh, we're going to get started. Got a big one here at the beginning and a big one at the end, so hang around. All right, first up, I showed this the other week, I don't know, a couple videos ago. Tagger B. Smith, uh, Tagger Rock. This is a reissue. I was really happy to find this, thanks to uh, Aaron and Mr. Pizarro. He uh, turned me on to this. We both got copies, and uh, I think our it's numbered a uh, thousand pressing, and I think our numbers are uh, concurrent. So I really dug that. Uh, Tiger B. Smith had the two albums. I'm like, man, I gotta find that other one. Hopefully they've reissued it, and couldn't find it. And all of a sudden on eBay, an original sealed copy popped up. We're the Tiger bunch. And this thing was started, uh, first opening bid was $16.99. And I thought, oh man, I'll never get this. Because there's a couple other ones on there starting at like 70 or something. So I favorited it. I put it in my favorites. Uh, totally forgot about it. The auction ended. Nobody bid on it. I was like, holy crap, it's sealed. And another one went off at like 40 bucks or something. It's on uh, Janus. This is the U.S. press. I think the original was Vertigo overseas. But uh, I was so pissed off. It went off. I forgot to bid. Nobody else bid on it. And the guy put it back up. 16.99. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna put a bid on here. So I went ahead and bid. Nobody else bid on it again. I got it for a uh, minimum bid. So I got 20 bucks in it shipped. I couldn't believe it. Uh, texted Aaron as soon as I got or I uh, won it and was like, man, you're not going to believe this. And the only thing is, you know, it's it's got a small little corner cut. There's a cutout. But so happy with that. All right, let's uh, get organized here. What's playing in the background? Found this yesterday. Mint tattoo. Uh, Sixty-eight. Uh, power trio blues. Two dudes, uh, guitar player and the bass player, were in Blue Cheer together. The uh, guitar player left Blue Cheer, started uh, this, and I guess the bass player. I don't know if he was doing both bands at the time, but. Uh, they released this album and that was it. It's got the uh, die cut cover. And there you go, remember, you can't go anywhere, man. You're going to miss this stuff. But uh, killer album so far. It's really good uh, power trio, blues, hard rock kind of stuff. Alright, uh, a couple old things here. Kind of throw them in here at the beginning, I guess. I mean, this thing is in like beautiful shape. I listened to it this morning and it sounds great. The Hullabaloos. This is uh, English, England's newest singing sensation. So you can tell they were going for the Beatles kind of thing. But uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, it's just that Beatles kind of sound. And, you know, not as good, of course, but... Really kind of dug that. Man, things in like beautiful shape. Uh, had to grab this, man. I love early Ike and Tina Turner. So fine. On Pompeii. This is uh, pretty killer, man. If you dig uh, Ike and Tina. And again, man, in beautiful shape. This is a promotional copy. Stereo. I think they did, uh, I look, was looking into it, I think they did mono, 
but that was they only released it as prom promotional copies, I guess. Stereo was what was for sale. Uh, most of the stuff was really cheap, man. Surprised me, found some really cool stuff. Got a good copy of Free Fire and Water. Other than you know, somebody wrote their name on it, but oh well, vinyl's great, covers great. But uh, and this album is always beat to shit when I find find it in the wild. So I, I'd never pick this up until you know I was like, I'm gonna wait and find one in good shape. It's just one of those albums that's always beat up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a later present. Also got Free Live. This uh, opens up like an envelope kind of deal. So that's cool. I need to work on my Free collection. I don't have a lot, actually. Uh, I kind of dig these, these uh, two-on-ones they used to do back in the 70s. Edgar Winter says uh, Entrance and White Trash. So it's a double gatefold with both albums put together. This thing's in great shape. The vinyl's beautiful. And uh, it's three bucks. I was like, yeah, I'll take that. Picked up a copy of this uh, on vacation. It was kind of beat up. It was almost like, you know, I've been looking for it for a long time. And, uh, Grabbed that one until I found a better one and found a better one. The Move, Shazam, still in the shrink. And again, I think this is a later pressing, like the you know, 70s, but uh, Vinyl's great. I just uh, always love that cover. Cool album. Had to grab it. Uh, this I haven't checked out yet. Very interesting looking at 60s punk. Fort Worth teen scene, this uh, Fort Worth, Texas, I guess bands from that area. area. And this is uh, a label out of London. Was it Beat, Big Beat Records? Putting a compilation together of uh, Texas bands. It's kind of crazy. But uh, this is Volume Two. So, and I like these old garage, you know, compilations. So. Excited to check that out. All right, a uh, couple really cool metal scores. Uh, Sharks, uh, Alter Ego, still in the shrink, and he did like a fake uh, Japanese uh, OBI. And this is kind of like a indie press from the 80s. This band was from California. Looking for the year. Can't remember the year on it. But, uh, you know, I, everybody knows Big Metalhead, and this is the kind of stuff I'm looking for the obscure indie press. Just hard to find stuff. These guys were called Sharks. They would change their name and get signed later on and become Shark Island. They were signed to Epic. Let's come out. And they're from the year 89. Same band, which did a name change, got onto a major. I believe this was the only uh, release, if I remember correctly. Or only major label release. Alright, one more. Total Blind Buy. Uh, I thought it was either going to be metal or maybe hardcore punk, but it looked like it was leaning towards metal. So, three bucks, I had to grab it. Carnage. It's from 1986. A band from uh, South Carolina. And it's actually autographed by uh, three of the members. So I get home and start looking it up. And this is like one of the rare ones. The rare... Uh, indie press metal from the 80s. I never heard of this band. There's a ton of these kind of bands, you know. And I try and grab any that I find. So I went on Pop Psych and plugged it in there. And looks like on average, this thing goes for about a hundred bucks on eBay. I couldn't believe it. Which, you know, it is hidden going on eBay. This is staying in the collection. It's in really good shape. It's got a little bit of ring wear, but for a black album cover from that era and metal, 
It's usually beat up. This thing's in really good shape. Vinyl looks beautiful. But, uh, yeah, man, this is uh, killer. And I've checked out one song online. I haven't spun this yet. I'm going to do it here uh, probably after Mint Tattoo finishes up. But, uh, kind of that Sierra Bungle. And, you know, so I was reading about them before, you know, I actually got to hear some online. And, yeah, that's kind of what they sound like to me. Yeah, and that, uh, kind of gloomy, doomy metal. Not modern doom metal, but just that. I mean, this kind of blew my mind. I said it was three bucks, and I took a chance on it and grabbed it. I love finding this kind of stuff. Man, I wish I could find more. <laughs> Alright, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I say, it's snowing, and I'm planning on spinning vinyl all day, hanging around the house. Hope everybody's having a great weekend, and uh, thanks for watching.